Hi everyone, this is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. AI is not just about text and image models. There are various other auxiliary models that are equally important and that is why I always cover them on the channel. I have been covering embedding models from lots of providers and over the last few months we have seen a lot of improvement in that area and that is why when I stumbled upon this new BGE VLM LLM S1 and S2 models I was immediately intrigued and that is why we are going to cover this model in this video locally and we will also play around with it. But before that as usual let's try to understand what exactly is this model in as simple words as possible. So this model which stands for Bidirectional General Embedding Vision Language Multitask Large Language Model or BGE VL MLLM is an advanced AI model that has been designed specifically for multimodal retrieval tasks. When we say multimodal retrieval tasks, what we mean is that these are the tasks that involve retrieving relevant information from across multiple types of data, mainly text and images. In more simpler words, if you have an image and want to find out other closely related images or texts, or you have a text query and want to find related pictures, this model helps you find that content very accurately. This model is trained using instruction-based fine-tuning to enhance its capability and flexibility across multiple different retrieval scenarios. It effectively learns deep connections between images and texts and produces embeddings. And embeddings are simply numerical representation that captures the meaning. So this model produces embeddings to efficiently find relevant multimodal content. There are two variants available for this model. One is S1 as you can see here and then the S2 is also in the same repo. S1 has specifically been trained on large scale synthetic data set which is called as mega pairs and I will also describe what exactly is mega pair is because that is the soul of this model. So this S1 has been trained on large scale synthetic data set which is mega pair. And this model is exceptionally good at composed image retrieval situation where you use descriptive or complex queries to retrieve images. The S2 model is an improved version of this S1 and that has been fine tuned further on additional data sets to perform well across a broader range of tasks and benchmarks. Before I tell you what mega pair is, let's try to start uh, the installation process and we will then keep talking. Let me also give a huge thanks to Best Compute who are sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you are looking to rent a GPU on very very affordable prices, you can find the link to their website in video description plus I am also going to give you a coupon code of 50% discount on range of GPUs. This is my Ubuntu system and this is my GPU card and VTRTX S6000 with 48 GPU of VRAM. Let me quickly create a virtual environment with Konda. And now let me install all the prerequisites in the virtual environment and while that happens let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Camel AI. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws of agents with applications in data generation, task automation and world simulation and I will also drop the link to their website in video's description. Okay, let's go back and see what is happening. So while it installs, let's talk a bit mo more about Megapair. So Megapair is not a model, by the way. It's a new method introduced by this, these guys to artificially generate a very large amount of training data for multimodal retrieval tasks. They also have a associated paper with it, which you can read through. And you can think of this mega pair as a smart and automated way to create millions of high quality examples that involve connections between pictures and text. So because we don't have enough quality data existed before and the traditional data sets are either not allowed to be browsed I guess and they lacked quantity, diversity and quality too and that is where these are trying to help. So read through this mega pairs I'm sure you are going to really like it. 
so let's go back and see what is happening this is going to take a couple of minutes so let's wait and now let me git clone the repo of mega pairs because i just want to grab an example from here and that is all done next up let me launch my jupyter notebook and then we are going to download and play with this model there so let's do this okay now let's download this model so i'm just going to go with the s1 here and the model is being downloaded so let's wait and the model is downloaded plus also got loaded onto our gpu and then it has also given us this uh, model evaluation where it is showing us a lot of information about this model as which layers are there and all that stuff so let's try to do the inference now now for the inference what we are going to do we are just going to use this image from the repo this is in the assets directory which we have just cloned and then you can see that here we are starting this with clause and then you can see that i am specifying this no grad option so what this torch dot no grad is doing it is ensuring that we don't compute ingredients or back propagation which saves memory and computation and then we are setting the processor which sets up the internal pre-process pipeline for the model that includes both tokenizer and image encoding um, pipeline and then we are uh, giving it a textual query instruction that make the background dark if the is as if if as if the camera has taken the photo at night then we are giving it uh, an image and then we are specifying this q or c this is a parameter uh, that explicitly is telling the method that we are processing a query so and then this is uh, the task instruction as what exactly what we want to do in terms of a retrieval so we want to retrieve the target image that best meets the combined criteria by using both the provided image and the image retrieval instructions and then this is where we are specifying our image so basically we are specifying text and our image here and then if i go down you can see that we have the these two candidate image so one is sir candy one and then the other one is sir candy two let me also show you that so this is the sir candy one which is at night and this is the one which is not at the night but at the daytime so probably you can already tell which one matches our original image and then again we are task is c here so which tells us this, these are the candidates instead of the query okay now next if you look here we have some of the uh, embeddings and other stuff happening now if you look at these examples so what we are what is happening here is we are generating the embeddings here now the model is returning numerical embedding of the query and the candidate image and then we are selecting only the embedding of the last hidden token that is why minus one and then we are normalizing these embeddings to ensure that numerical vectors have a consistent scale that improves the accuracy and stability of the uh, retrieval comparison and then we are computing the similarity score so you see um, it says this line here that score is equal to torch.matmol so basically what is happening this line is computing similarity score between the query and each candidate using dot product between the embeddings and then the higher score indicate better matches which means that it closely uh, it is closer to the meaning and matching retrieval criteria so this is what is happening here so let me run this to see what it does and there you go the model has printed out the response so if you remember we had three images so it means that the value here is the 0.88 and 0.32 0.88 is the similarity of the query image which is a daytime carriage near water and grass as i showed you so this was a query image this was the one which is a 0.88 and this is a uh, sorry this is a query image and these are the candidate images so this one is for the night and that is why its score is low so um now 
it also shows the word tensor here a tensor here is simply a numerical array containing the computed similarity score between the images and you can already guess that you can simply provide it an image in the text embedding and it uh, text prompt and it is going to return you the embedding and you can easily use it in your multimodal rag pipeline if you're interested in how to build that rag pipeline i have done heaps of videos around it so please just search the channel let me quickly show you the vram consumption it is consuming over 29 gig of vram so that is quite high i would say for an embedding model but maybe uh, it is too accurate anyway so that's it i hope that you enjoyed it let me know what you think about this embedding model in multimodality if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thank you for watching